Hello and welcome class, Denzel Rodriguez here, your personal finance geek of the 21st century. On this channel, we cover the velocity banking concept, infinite banking, and kingdom authority. And today we're gonna to be discussing the pre-game work, pre-game steps that I feel the need, uh, especially now in the economy that we're in, and just in my own personal experience lately with new clients, uh, new prospects, new leads, wanting to work with me one-to-one, -one, wanting me to help you. This is me talking directly to you. You know who you are. You watch the channel, you're a subscriber, you're a follower. This video is for you and it's all about the four major numbers, all right? So let's dive right into the lesson here. Let's not waste any time. This is what I need from you, okay? The person that has been following me, you you watch the material, you're learning about these different financial strategies and concepts and philosophies, and you're figuring out ways that you can implement these strategies into your finances to achieve the goals that you want to achieve. And you want that hand-holding support, you want financial coaching, you want consulting, you want an accountability partner, right? You want me, you wanna work with me, got it, great. Guys, I need to know the four major numbers and you can't guess, you can't guess this stuff. Don't lie to me, don't lie to yourself. If you truly wanna maximize your investment in coaching, working with me, I got to know the numbers. I don't need to know your life story. I don't need to know your financial traumas that you went through when you were six. I don't need to know those emotional things that have gotten you to this point where you are in your situation. Why? Because I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to fix you, right? I, I, I don't want to fix you. That's not my role. That's your role. That's your role. You need to fix yourself. Now, can I be a part of that process? I absolutely want to be a part of that process. I absolutely want to be in part of your journey in that transformation that when you decide to jump on that train that's going 100 miles an hour towards all of your desires, all of your dreams and goals. And I want to be on that train with you. I want to be on that plane with you, whatever metaphor you want to use. I want to be in the passenger seat, just looking at you grow. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. By the way, you got a left turn coming up, you know, and make sure you stop at the red light here and make sure we course correct when the time is right. And let's be on the lookout for, for the weather. We want to make sure the road's not slippery or whatever the metaphors we're using, right? My point is I need to know the four major numbers, guys. A lot of you are reaching out to me. You're asking for support. I recently started a ministry. I've got tools in place. I got things going on that's really helping with the process overall, but everything starts with your numbers, whether you're fluctuating income, monthly paycheck, bi-weekly, social security, pension, disability income, entrepreneur, side business plus full-time job, salary plus commission, hourly plus overtime, plus side hustle, plus Uber driving and Lyft. I don't care what it is. I just need to know what's coming in, what's leaving, and what's left over. What's the debt? What do we got? What's the situation? How do we press forward? This is not a guessing game. When you jump on a call with me, that we're not guessing here. I know the numbers. You know the numbers. We're conversing over the numbers. What's going on? What are the four major numbers? That's your total net monthly income. What are your expenses? This is not rocket science. What are your expenses? Anything and everything that leaves your checking account is an expense, whether that's an investment, whether that's you saving money, whether that's you tithing, giving, debt payments, toothpaste, toilet paper, anything and everything that leaves your checking account or accounts is an expense we must account for it then there's the debt what debts that what debts do you have then zelda's my mortgage count yes it is a debt yes anything okay that has interest attached to it or even if you owe your brother or sister money mom or dad my, that is a debt okay what is the loan balance? What's the payment? What's the interest rate? Get me every detail about the debt. And then what's that cash flow? What is that remaining cash flow after all bills and debts are paid? What's left over? So don't tell me that you make 5,000 a month, you spend three and you cash flow two, but from the two, 
you send 500 to the church, 500 to your savings account, 500 to an investment because that these are expenses. So in reality, you're really cash flowing five because if if the other 1500 has a destination, has a location that it's already going to, I can't use that in our strategy to pay off debt. I can't use 2K because 15 is being used. So you want to add this to this. So it's really $4,500 is what you're spending per month. You have 500 left over, right? And don't tell me that you have 300,000 of debt when in reality you have 323,747 and 18 cents. I want to know that number, not the roundabout. Don't do that to me. Don't embarrass me, please. Guys, you know who you are. Give me the dollars and cents. Don't play. This is your numbers. This is your life we're talking about here. Okay. This is your life. I already did my numbers and my successful clients, they did their numbers. Now you're next. Let's get your numbers right. From there, how much cash do we have on hand? How much liquid cash, savings, emergencies, sinking funds, whatever you call it. What is the net cash on hand that we have available to us liquid, right? What's the debt tool? Either you have one or you don't. Right? You've got the credit cards, the line of credit, the HELOC, BLOC, right? cash value line of credit, policy, IUL, whole life, 401k loan, right? securities, back line of credit, margin. What do we got? What is that? What is at our disposal? Assets, list them all out. There might be some, you know, variety, like for example, 401k today, you got 340 and then tomorrow it's 322 and then it's 371. So I get it. Just put the latest number that you have when you're tracking all your numbers, whether you're using your own spreadsheet or mine. Okay. I'm, I'm very flexible when it comes to that. As long as you look at my spreadsheet or like a video like this and you give me all of the numbers. Don't give me your spreadsheet with just four numbers, right? I need it all, okay? All of it. Don't play. Come on. Credit scores. Annualcreditreport.com. Log in. What's the latest scores that you have? Let's get that printed out. Let's see where you're at. From there, a lot of you struggle knowing how much you make and how much you spend. You struggle because you don't look at it, right? That's the only reason why you're struggling is because you don't, you're not looking at it. You're afraid to look in the mirror. So my encouragement to you is don't be afraid to look into the mirror. You have to live with that body for the rest of your days. So get comfortable looking at yourself in the mirror. And that's essentially what you're doing with your money. You're going to be with your money for the rest of your days. So get comfortable looking at it, whether it's 60 minutes a week. Okay. Whatever the schedule is that you need to create, start looking at it. The more you look at your money, the more you will find out about you, about your money, about where it's going. Now here, here's the easiest thing in the world to do. So there's no guessing. Okay. You don't have to create a fancy budget. Don't have to do all that. Look, very simple. Get me the last 90 days up to a year of bank statements, the checking accounts, right? Because all money from everywhere, whether it's a business, a under the table job, a cash job, whatever it is, all money that you produce must hit a checking account first, right? It, it, it has to. That's the way it works. Everybody has one of these, right? So whether it's a checking or maybe a savings, what, wherever money initially lands first in your finances, whether you have one checking account or five of them, right? Get me the bank statements, print them out 90 days up to a year. And then you can literally go line by line, line by line, and you can see all the minuses, right? And then you'll see like pluses, that's money coming in and you'll add it up and it'll say, oh, five thousand one hundred and twenty five dollars is actually what I made, not five K in the month of December. <clears throat> and then you look at the minuses, 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 and then you add it all up and you say, oh, four thousand ninety six dollars and forty three cents is what I spent for the month of December. OK, then you go back. What was November? What was October? What was September? Right. Keep going back all the way back. Ninety days up to a year. Are the numbers the same? Do they fluctuate? Of course, everyone does. They all fluctuate, right? The most consistency though, for those that are salary, hourly, you're gonna get a range, right? You're gonna have a range and then we pretty much add up all those numbers and we get the average out of it all to see what, what are we bringing in and what are we spending, right? When it comes to your expenses, you can have a column of guaranteed, like these bills don't change, like a mortgage bill, like uh, subscriptions, like these bills don't change. Then you have the guaranteed bills like food and gas, but they change. So it's fluctuating. 
And that's where you see the, the fluctuation in your finances, all right? But this is all I want you to do. 90 days up to a year. So three to 12 bank statements times however many bank accounts you have. So you have five of them, then you need to do 12 times five or three times five bank statements so that we can understand truly what's coming in, what's coming out, right? Now, a lot of you are in your late 50s, late 40s, mid 60s, and you got a problem with technology and technology got a problem with you. But fear not, you're working with the finance geek who uses pen and paper, right? Well, whiteboard, marker and a whiteboard. So if you have a whiteboard like this, or if you have a notebook like this, yes, or at the very least, even if you're not tech savvy, at the very least, you know how to use Word. You know how to use Word. And you also know how to send an email because that's how you originally reached out to me and you filled out a form, right? I don't care if you put all your numbers in one email or a couple of screenshots, as long as it's legible when you're doing screenshots and you're writing things down. If your penmanship is like mine, we're gonna be in good business. If you have poor penmanship, right? Then type it up in a Word doc or an email, boom, send it right to me. But don't leave any details out, right? Don't leave any details. Don't let me guess. I don't want to guess. I just want to have the numbers so we can move forward. So as you're, you're doing this right here, you're getting those numbers. When it comes to the debt, this is how I want you to lay it out. This is the debt layout. Give me the name of the debt. What is it? Okay, mortgage. What's the balance owed? $300,530.21. Got it. What's the monthly payment? $2,240.81. Got it. What's the interest rate? 5.5%. 5 .5%. Okay, cool. What is the uh, uh, loan? Is it a 30 year? Is it a 15 year? Let me know that. Get me the amortization schedule. Call up your mortgage institution, company, lender. Say, I need the latest amortization schedule. Print that out for me. Thank you so much, right? Get that so that I know where you are in the loan. Are you two years in, five years in, 10 years in? So we can understand how much interest is left on that debt to determine whether or not Velocity Banking will be worth attacking that or snowballing. Find out if the debt is simple interest or amortized. You might have a car loan that's actually simple interest at 4% rather than 4% amortized. There's going to be a big difference in interest, right? Also, there'll be a difference in terms of whether we go after that or something else. So find out if the debt is in fact simple interest or amortized. And then also let me know if you're paying more than the minimum. Might have a credit card, you owe 10K monthly minimum payments only $100, but you're paying 250. I need to know that because that cuts into our what? The cash flow, right? You put $100 a month, but you're actually paying 250 a month. You need to document that in the expenses. So again, we're not guessing. Once you've done all that, go ahead, email it to me. Email me your numbers. Say Denzel, I'm ready to go. And from there, we have options. How do you want to work with the finance geek? Do you want to pay for financial coaching? Awesome. Here are some of your options. You've got one-to-one. -one, we've got group coaching. I've got a course, right? And everything is in tiers according to your affordability, right? What can you afford with your current situation? And let's say you can't even afford the cheapest product service that I have that's fine. There's still options for you. And that's the Finance Geek Ministry. It's on my website, denzelrodriguez.com. As soon as you land, you're going to see Finance Geek Ministry. Boom, right? You click on that. All you got to do is put your name, email, and you're going to be given a strategy, which is literally re reiterating what I just told you to do here to send me your numbers. And you're going to exchange some of your social currency, like, subscribe, comment, review, share, right? Watching the videos, commenting on it, positive comments, you know, engagement. You're going to exchange some of your time and effort so that you can have my time and effort because you're not in a position where you can afford it. No problem. We'll create a strategy we'll work around that. That's what the Finance Geek Ministry is for. It's a ministry of finance where you literally receive coaching, consulting, support for free whether it's via group, live Q&A, live group coaching, hot seat coaching, Q&A sessions, live streams, you name it, a free course, a free breakdown, free documents, free spreadsheets. I mean, it's all there. You just got to be willing to take the action, right? It's all there. No excuses. 
So even if your negative cash flow, zero cash flow, or only cash flowing 50 bucks a month, $100 a month, under 500 a month, ideally, I push people through Finance Geek Ministry, get you to a point where you feel comfortable now investing in yourself with some financial coaching. Boom, you make that investment with me, we take it to the next level. And then there's people making six, seven figures that I work with, right? Multiple six figures, high seven figures, low seven figures, you just broke your first hundred. You're making 80, 90 K a year. So you're high five figures, you know, 70, 80, 90, or maybe you're doing okay. You know, average 50, 60 K a year and you're cash flowing a thousand bucks, 2000 bucks. Okay. Save up that cash flow a couple of months and then boom, drop it on some long-term financial coaching with me one-to-one, -one, or you invest in the course and you work your way up with, with the no like, and trust factor, right? You work your way up. You determine if this stuff is really for you or not. You you do your due diligence on me, on, on the work, and you, you observe how I operate to determine if we're a good fit for each other. Let's not play games. Send me the numbers. Let's have some fun, right? And then... Once I have the numbers, I give you the strategy and I say, boom, within six months, within three months, within two months, we can pay off bum, bum, bum and increase cash flow here and build our credit here and do this and do that and do this. And it's all laid out. Once we have the strategy, guess what? Now we get to know each other a little bit. What are your financial goals? Who do you want to be? What do you want to be remembered for? Tell me about your family. You married, kids, what? Divorce, single mom. Okay, gotcha. Okay, then we then you get a little more emotional and you start telling me about your trauma, what you went through. You know, dad wasn't there, mom died, this person died, lost a spouse, this happened, I got cheated on, I got betrayed, I got stabbed in the back, I was shot when I was 22 and now I'm paralyzed, right? So now you're sharing all of those emotional things where now I get to learn more about what drives you right? And what initially led you to me? Was it faith? Was it logic? Was it just pure math, right? Once I start gathering that data, that's going to help me communicate the strategy more effectively to you. But in the beginning, I don't need to know those details right away because I don't want to waste, I don't want to waste 30 minutes on our first call together. And then I never hear from you again because it was a nice conversation. He's a nice guy. Denzel's a nice guy. And, you know, we talked for 45 minutes and I told him my life story, but I need to pay him again to actually get the strategy to know what to do moving forward. And that's not how I operate. It's strategy first, results first, momentum first, action steps first, regardless of what trauma and obstacles and challenges and oppression and stress and depression and anxiety you've gone through. That all goes out the door when we're looking at the numbers. What are the numbers? What are the numbers? What are the numbers? What are the numbers? Right? We speak the same language. Gotcha. What are the numbers? Okay. Now that I have the numbers, I can now develop a strategy regardless of what your situation traumas are. I develop a strategy. The only thing that would interfere that strategy is if you have something going on that you failed to mention in the numbers. For example, let's say you gathered all your numbers here and you've got $50,000 cash on hand, but 25K of it is going to be deployed for paying back taxes or something like that, like to some type of situation, right? Or someone's sick in the family and, and this money is locked up. You just make a little note, not in use, right? Little note, you don't have to give me the whole background, not right away, because I want to be really really effective with that first interaction that we have together so that you do come back so that you know you're not wasting your time you're like man that phone call was amazing god knows what i could do over the next three years with this guy over the next year two years with this guy that's why i operate the way that i that i do i don't need to know the full situation the full scope of what's going on unless i ask additional questions to get some clarity but i will not spend so much time here i just need to know Hey Denzel, although I have 50K cash on hand, 25K is not available. I only have 25K to actually work with for the velocity banking strategy. Gotcha, thank you. Put that in a note, simple. You don't have to tell me, oh, you know, my this is this and this is going on. And you know, when I was 17, I bum 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 and you know, I've had back problems ever since. And you know, you start going like this for 15 minutes. The, the thing is, the way that I'm speaking right now, I'm, I'm being direct. I'm being straightforward with you, but when I'm on the phone call, I respect my elders. I will be quiet. I will let you talk. It's how I was raised. I don't interrupt my elders. I wait till you're done and then I and then I say something. 
or I might try to interject to say, can I make a statement here before you go any further? I don't want to interrupt you. Yes, then they'll go ahead. And I'm going to try and steer you back because that's in for it's there's a point where you start giving too much information and that eats into our time where we can actually strategize together. You're investing money. That's what you're doing when you hire me as your financial coach. You're investing money and time into this, into your situation. Last thing I want to do is waste your time by you telling me your life story, right? It's not that I don't want to know your life story. Trust me when I tell you I love you, right? I do. I mean that from the heart. I love you because my father loved me first, right? My father in heaven loved me first. Therefore, I love you. My father in heaven told me to love my neighbor as myself. So therefore, I'm loving you as much as I love myself, which is a very high standard. I love me because I love the way the father created me and I love what he's doing in my life for me. Therefore, I now have this unconditional love I can operate from. This is the, the stance, the position that I'm in, which gives me the capacity to extend that love to you without sacrificing performance and the way that I deliver my messaging, right? So trust me when I tell you, I love you. I respect you. I honor you. It's a privilege to be able to work with you. It's a privilege, right? To be able to see the transformation that you're going to have in the next three to five, five to seven years. It's going to be amazing. But there's a time and place for you to share the life story. I want to get those details once the strategy is in place. Once we've got the black and white stuff down, now we dip into the gray area. Oh, you have anxiety. Got it. Oh, you're on this particular drug or you do this so that you can operate effectively so that your mind doesn't go crazy. Or, oh, you have dyslexia. Got it. Oh, you have, you know, back issues. You you, you have to, you know, use a, a, a cane, right? Oh, okay. You come from this culture. Got it. Which is why you were raised this way, which is, oh, okay. Daddy left you when you were six. Got it. So that led you to be in a single mom household. And oh, okay. So that's why we connect because you, you was raised by a single mom. I was. And so that's how you got connected. Oh, you're a believer. Wonderful. Got it. This is data that I get to now record for myself. So I get to know you more on that next phone call. I say, how your mom's doing? How's your mom doing? Not how your dad's doing. Dad died or dad left. He's not even in the picture. So this helps me have better conversations from call to call, right? But that's not what we lead with. We lead with numbers first. The numeros, what are they and where are we going and where are we headed and where do you want to be, right? And with that being said, my name is Denzel Rodriguez, your personal finance geek of the 21st century. Hope you found value in this video. Comment below, like it, subscribe, take action, click the link below regarding joining the finance geek ministry if you're in a tight position. And if you're not in a tight position, you're doing well, cash flow over $500, thousand plus a month, good income, six figures, maybe even seven figures, multiple six figures, high five figures, and you want to implement a strategy like this and you already have certain disciplines in place, you're going to want to jump right into the one-on-one -on -one time coaching. And I throw in my courses and, and group trainings and all that. I kind of bundle it all together when people sign up for the one-on-one -on -one long-term coaching because I want to attack it from all angles, right? I want to make sure that you're receiving A1 grade A customer service, that white glove service. We're like, man, they got good food and the service was great. My God, 30% tip. That's the experience I want you to have, right? You, you come into this kingdom, you come into this community and you're treated like royalty because that's what you are. That's my understanding. That's, I don't know if it's yours, but that's mine. So I want you to experience that. I want you to experience financial freedom, independence, abundance, right? Big giver, cheerful giver, loving, caring, all of the things that you're after. This is a process. I'm not saying this is the only way to go, but this is my process and it has a 95 plus plus percent success ratio. And with that being said, we'll close it out here. Have a wonderful day. God bless. And we'll be talking soon.